Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from AzureAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our build deploy test with Jenkins and Docker series. And this is an advanced series as we already know and, and we have been discussing so many different concepts on Jenkins with declarative pipelines and how we can leverage the power of Blue Ocean to actually create the pipelines and stuff. But now we are going to talk about even more advanced concept on Jenkins which is nothing but understanding Docker container as build slave or agent for Jenkins. So we have already discussed about this build slaves or otherwise called as agents for Jenkins and how they need to be configured with Jenkins master and how they talk with SSH or JNLP and all those stuff. And Jenkins agent is a piece of software which executes the build task given by the Jenkins master. We already know that. So this is something we already discussed while we were discussing about the Jenkins master and slave configuration and how we can call it in the pipelines and stuff. As that said, the build agents, if the build agent is a well sophisticated machine which has all the required plugins to build your software, then your build runs without any problem since all the dependencies will be resolved while executing in that particular agent. So that's the actual build agent should be and that's the whole idea that we are going to be building starting this video series. But Again, guys, we are going to talk a lot more details about this build agent in our further videos. But yeah, this is what is a build agent. In other ways cases, you need to install them else your build will completely fail. This time for the build agent, we're not going to use any jar file like slave.jar, which was something used to be supplied with the Jenkins master, as we discussed in our earlier videos, which we can use to connect with the JNLP and all those stuff. But this time we are going to be using the Docker container as the build agent. So this is a magical term. So what if we don't really need to use a whole machine to act just for build agent? Rather, we use a Docker container to act as a build agent for us, which is pretty cool, right? Because what we can do is instead of installing the agent within our machine or installing that in a virtual machine or something like that, and then communicating with a master, we can create an ephemeral Docker container which acts as an agent for the Jenkins which performs the job that we actually give it to that agent like building the application and compiling it and also deploying that within another machine and creating the artifacts and then that particular container dies. So that's the power of this particular container itself, right? So how we can achieve this? So if you remember in our earlier videos, we used to install our agent in Hyper-V machines and run the build there, right? But instead of it, we are gonna use the Docker container as a Jenkins agent to build our software. This is pretty cool concept. And I think this is the way or futuristic way of using the Jenkins agent to perform a build operation with Jenkins. But how can we achieve this operation? Because this seems to be like a magical terminology, but achieving this should be a bit complex, it seems, right? Docker plugin for Jenkins is the answer. So there is a special plugin released in Jenkins where you can install this particular Docker plugin, which is gonna act as an build agent for you. So what it does is it do all the magical operation that whatever I told you just now. So Docker plugin for Jenkins allows container to be dynamically provisioned as a Jenkins nodes using Docker. It is a Jenkins cloud plugin for Docker. And the aim of this Docker plugin is to able to use a Docker host to dynamically provision a Docker container as a Jenkins agent node, lets that run in a single build, then tear down that nodes without the build process requiring any awareness of the Docker, which is pretty cool. This is something which we are going to be discussing in this particular video. So in order to do that, we need to somehow install the Docker Jenkins Docker plugin, which is not there and we have never ever installed within our series so far. So we are going to install that and we'll see how we can actually work with that. But that comes with some more complications here because our Docker should be running within our host machine but somehow we need to communicate with our host machine with the container that we are currently running. The container that we are currently running is actually nothing but the Jenkins master. In this case our Jenkins master itself is a container running on the docker and we now need to communicate with the host docker which is currently running. So in order to do that 
there needs some more setup that we need to be doing again that's gonna be something which we need to be discussing in our future videos but yeah this is what is the whole idea guys this is how we're gonna do that so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work so for that i'm gonna flip to my edge chrome browser right now so as you can see this is our jenkins and we have been discussing this so long and so as you can see that i'm not really recording continually i'm just giving a lot of breaks while recording this particular series but yeah you got the idea we have never ever used the Jenkins container as a build agent. All these days, the agent are spinned up automatically within the Jenkins container. It takes any as the agent for us and then it executes for us, right? That's what we have been doing all these days. But this time we are gonna make use of the container as the agent to execute our build and compilations. So for doing that, I'm gonna go to the manage Jenkins over here. And then if you go all the way to the manage plugins and if you search for something called as docker you can see that there is a plugin called as docker over here so you need to basically install this particular plugin the docker plugin for jenkins which will actually perform all the required operation for us just that we just discussed right now so i'm just going to install this particular docker uh, plugin over here and then i'm going to restart the jenkins once the execution is complete and you can actually see all these particular operation over the Docker dashboard as well. So I have opened this particular Docker dashboard over here and you can see that I can see the complete log files of what's happening for that particular container which I'm executing. This is nothing but the Jenkins LTS container that I'm running. And you can see the same console log that you can see over here within this particular Docker dashboard itself, which is pretty cool, right? So you can see all the verbose information of what's really happening on that particular uh, Jenkins itself. So you can see that the container is currently starting up and the Jenkins is fully up and running right now, which means I don't really see any progress over here. It's, it still seems to be like installing, but it is not. You can basically go delete and try to access the 8080 and you should see the login page, which means it is up and running, right? That's the verbose information helpful for us, which is pretty cool. All right, now we are back to the dashboard. And now if I go back to the manage Jenkins and in order to communicate basically with the Docker itself, we actually need to go to this manage nodes and clouds. If you go over here, you can see that basically we create a new node in our earlier video, something like this, like permanent agent. If you want to, we just select the permanent agent. We give the name and then we try to set the agent over there but this time we are going to configure the cloud which is actually going to help for us to configure the docker container operation so you can see that once i hit this add new cloud it's going to show me the docker because we just installed the docker plugin once you select this particular docker it will tell you you need to enter the docker cloud details and the docker agent templates so this docker cloud details is nothing but the details that you need to fill in for connecting with the docker now you can ask me what is this particular docker host url well guys this docker host url is nothing but the docker which is currently running anywhere that you need to access for for instance if you need to access the docker which is running within your local machine you need to give the local machines url over here or if a docker daemon is currently running on a remote machine then you need to give the remote machines url followed by the port number. So that's what is this particular Docker host URL. And now you can ask me, where is this particular host URL? Where can I get this particular host URL? In order to get this particular Docker host URL, you actually need to go all the way to your Docker here. And if you just double click, you can see this one and you can go to the settings and you can see that this is my Docker settings and here, I need to enable this expose daemon on the TCP colon localhost 2375 without TLS. So this is the one URL that I need to be basically accessing or using it within my Docker host URL. So this is the place that you need to be using basically. So now if you want to access or see all the images which is currently available within my local machine, I can actually do the same thing. I can just put the uh, HTTP colon double slash uh, localhost 2375 and containers slash json if i just do that you can see it shows me all the containers running 
within my machine right now. So it shows me the container ID and you can see the Jenkins SH just created and the port number which has been used and all those details. So this is the JSON file which tells me all the containers which are currently running within my Docker daemon which is installed within my local machine. This one, the Docker for Windows. And that's exactly what I'm going to be using for connecting with my Docker host URL. In order to do that, I actually need to do this. TCP colon double slash host dot docker dot internal. And now you can confu get confused a bit over here. Where is this host dot docker dot internal? Where is this one coming from? Where is this domain name coming from? Well, you can actually see this as well. If you go to this particular container which I'm currently running, the Docker container, you can open the console, the CLI, from here itself, which is directly, it goes to the bin of SH of that particular uh, Docker container. You can see it's actually running the Docker X, exec hyphen IT for the interactive mode to run the bash for us or the shell for us in here. And then you can just do a ping of the host or Docker dot internal. And if you hit enter, you can see that the pinging is actually happening, which means you can now communicate with that particular Docker daemon from this particular container. And that's exactly what we'll be doing over here. I'm just gonna give the host.docker.internal, or you can also give the IP address of this particular machine to access that. But this is the right way of doing it. And then I'm just gonna give 2375. And note here, I'm actually giving the TCP here, not HTTP, because this is gonna communicate using the TCP protocol, not with the HTTP protocol, All right? And now you can actually test the connection and you'll get the version of the particular API which is being used, which is pretty cool. And now you can just enable this particular Docker daemon to be connected. And then you can hit save, which means you are now connected. That's it. This is how you can actually communicate with the host Docker installed within your local machine with the container which is currently running the Jenkins, which is pretty cool. So this is the one way that you can do, but we'll be discussing even more while we try to execute this particular build agent and we'll see how it actually works, which we'll be discussing in our next video.